Hi, I'm Dr. Jack West, medical oncologist in Seattle, Washington. ASCO 2018 is coming up very quickly, and we've just gotten the release of the vast majority of the ASCO abstracts, so it's time to really prioritize which ones are the ones that are most important to focus on when you're there or following from home. I uh, wanted to offer my top five for both advanced non-small cell, which I covered in my last video, and today my top five in the other lung cancer track on stage one to three non-small cell, as well as small cell lung cancer and mesothelioma. So let's get started. The first one is on lymph node yield in patients who have had a resection for early stage non-small cell lung cancer. And this is uh, being presented at the oral session on Monday morning, abstract 8502, and uh, it looks at uh, the, a specific kit for lymph node collection, and uh, this is a very meticulous, detailed way of basically having uh, surgeons work through how to uh, do their lymph node uh, dissections. And Dr. Osorogi Ogbon has uh, demonstrated that this kit leads to a better surgery, more uh, better staging, and actually better overall survival where it's been used. So uh, I would say it's a very important study. It's not a new drug, uh, new uh, imaging, or, uh, or radiation, but shows that we can refine our results with surgery by uh, dealing with that in a more meticulous way. The next one to focus on is by Dr. Jeff Oxnard. It's a late-breaking abstract, also on the Monday morning oral session and this looks at genome-wide sequencing for early-stage lung cancer detection from plasma cell-free DNA. And we don't have any data from this yet because it's, a, it's, a, it's still a late-breaking abstract, but the potential for this is very great. If we could use cell-free DNA uh, and have a better chance of identifying which patients with perhaps ambiguous imaging findings actually have cancer and which ones are much less likely to have uh, lung cancer, it will be a great benefit. This technology in plasma cell-free DNA is moving very quickly, and I think this has the promise to be a very important presentation. So uh, that's one I think worth seeing on Monday morning. Another one uh, in the poster session is being presented by Dr. Spring Kong, and this looks at uh, surgery or uh, stereotactic ablative body radiation for uh, elderly patients with a T1 or T2 cancer, and it looks at a matched uh, case series. And surprisingly, I would say, shows a significant difference in overall survival favoring surgery after some other studies, uh, all imperfect and with various limitations, have shown pretty comparable results. So uh, this is certainly going to lead to some more controversy and debate about uh, whether we should favor surgery for uh, elderly patients and or ones who are on the border for uh, being candidates for surgery. But it's certainly going to uh, be worth uh, studying these results and adding to the conversation. The next one uh, to uh, highlight is on the Trinity trial of Rova T. Uh, this is a phase two study being presented by Dr. David Carbone, abstract 8507 in the oral session on Monday morning. Uh, overall, this is a disappointing result. This is with uh, patients with DLL3 positive uh, treated small cell lung cancer, and in fact, several of these patients, many had received uh, two lines or, uh, or more, even three lines. So uh, part of the issue with the potentially, uh, with our interpretation of why we have seen here disappointing results that we'll see in more detail could be that these are heavily pretreated patients. Uh, but we're going to need to look at these results and see whether we can identify a subgroup of patients who are still uh, seeing promising enough results to continue working with Rova-T or whether we should move on to different approaches. So uh, that will be important to sift through and see whether we can still refine uh, how best to use this, uh, this agent. 
the last one I wanted to focus on is uh, the so-called DREAM trial, and this is being presented by Dr. Ann Nowak. It's in the oral session on Monday morning, uh, 8503, and it's on mesothelioma, and specifically a combination of uh, chemotherapy with durvalumab immunotherapy in first line. This is not a big study. This is just 31 patients per, uh, reported in the abstract. So there's only so much you can say about that, but the response rate exceeds 50% and the six month progression free survival is around 70%. Uh, so really this is enough to get our attention. We've been interested in immunotherapy, at least in the second line setting. And I think one of the key questions will be whether these results are encouraging enough to uh, feel that this should uh, go ahead of an approach of chemo with the VEGF inhibitor, uh, which has looked good in uh, various other trials, potentially followed by immunotherapy. But of course, uh, immunotherapy, there's a lot of excitement and it does have some activity in mesothelioma. And it, it goes to follow that uh, we're going to have the same debates in mesothelioma as we do in advanced non-small uh, non -small cell and potentially in small cell as well of whether the immunotherapy should be introduced in the second line setting or uh, earlier uh, either instead of or in combination with our standard chemotherapy backbones. So that's uh, what I have for now. There's certainly others to follow and I'm interested in whether people have other suggestions, comments, objections. So please leave those. I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe. Hope to see you at ASCO. Take care.